In today's video, I'm sharing why every woman needs a planner and how you can put it to work for your best year ever. everyone and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur and Happy New Year. It's wonderful to be back. Today I'm going to share seven tips on how you can put your planner to work for you to give you the best year ever. I believe that every woman should use a planner. Planners help drive your purpose and they put the vision before you. And I know from personal experience that when you use a planner on a daily basis, you become more efficient, more productive, and you're easily able to achieve your goals. Over the break, I read The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, and this was my favorite quote from it. He said, small, smart choices plus consistency plus time equals radical difference. His whole book is about how you make tiny choices and you stay consistent with them and it can completely change your life. So that's how you're going to use your planner this year. You can find planners anywhere. You can find them at the drugstore. You can make one out of a blank notebook as long as you have a calendar that you can write in it. So it doesn't matter what type of planner you use. We're going to talk about that in a minute. The point is that you use one. Let's begin with tip number one, which is to select the type of planner that will work for you. I'm trying something different this year. I normally always use a weekly planner, but I've noticed that because I'm using my planner more and more as I dive into the whole world of planning and journaling and notebooking is that I actually tend to write a lot each day in my planner. And so the weeklies are not really cutting it for me anymore. I'm trying a daily spread this year. The planners that you're seeing in this video are from the day designer and planned and proper. They're both really high quality planner companies and I will leave them linked down below. So the key is, of course, to find the type of planner that works for you. And most planner companies have many options. You can get a weekly spread, you can get a daily spread, you can have vertical planning or horizontal planning. It just depends on how your brain works. Some people like to bullet journal and they plan in their bullet journal. You might like to use a digital planner exclusively. If so, I can highly recommend the ones from the Secret Owl Society. I like to use a combination of both as I mentioned, and I'll get into that a little bit more later. But the first thing is to settle on the type of planning that you like to do. If you've never planned before, then you're just going to have to learn by trial and error. And so that's what I've done. I've used the weekly spread for years and now I'm trying the daily spread. So next year I'll have to let you know how that worked out for me. Tip number two on making your planner work for you is to select a word for the year and write it down in your planner. So you know how I ask you to write down three adjectives that describe your style each season for the 10 item capsule wardrobe. I do that because when you select words and write them down, it keeps them in your consciousness and they inform every decision you make when deciding what to wear or what to purchase for your wardrobe. Choosing a word for the year will help you in the same way. How do you choose a word for the year? There's many ways. You can just sit in silence and think about it, ponder what you want for this upcoming year, what you want more of in your life. You could walk in nature, you could do prayer meditation. There's many different ways that you can come across your word for the year, but I do recommend that you choose a word and you write it down in your planner. You could of course explore this more in your journals and your notebooks, but definitely keep it in your planner because this is what you're going to be using on a daily basis to help achieve your goals. Tip number three is to not only learn, but embrace how you use your planner and everyone's going to be different. I can't tell you what to do in that area. For example, I do not put time sensitive appointments into my planner generally. I put those digitally in a calendar on my phone with an alert so that I don't forget them because it's quite possible that if I only write them down in my planner, I might miss them. So I use both a digital planner and I use a paper planner. However, you might consult your planner several times a day and writing down a time sensitive appointment in your planner might work for you. Perhaps you like to color block and you write your important appointments in red. So if that works for you, then that is what you need to do. But if you're like me and you've missed appointments by doing that, you do need to set an alarm to remind yourself. 
another way that I embrace with using my planner is that I have to keep it near me at all times. So it is near my bedside at night. I can't tell you how many times, sometimes even the, in the middle of the night, I'll come up with an idea and I have to write it down <laughs> in my planner, which I know is bad, but I just can't sleep if I have an idea and I don't write it down because I know I probably won't remember it in the morning. So I keep my planners by me at bed at night and then I also keep them by my computer or while I'm working throughout the day. So I keep them with me. But as you go throughout the year, just notice your own habits with your planner. You might have little eccentricities with your planner that will make you use it more and make it more effective for you. So notice that and embrace it. Tip number four is to use it to keep you on track every day. No matter how you use your planner, most people can agree that the main function of their planner is to approach each day in an organized manner to be more efficient and to handle your day with purpose. So I write down the top things I need to accomplish each day and I tick them off as I complete them. I circle the ones I did not complete and those will move to the next day. I do feel a sense of accomplishment when this happens. I like looking at a list of checked off items because it makes me feel like I've been productive. Tip number five is to consider making your planner pretty. If you are a visual creature like I am, I think most women are, we like aesthetics, we like beauty, and we don't all have the same taste, but we like what we like. And when we see beautiful things, it pleases us. You are going to want to make your planner visually attractive if you're going to open it and use it each day. This may seem childish and superficial to some, but it actually works, I know from experience. Now there's all different ways that you can decorate your planner. There are people on YouTube who fully decorate every page with stickers and washi tape and markers, or their artists and in their bullet journals, they create beautiful spreads for the month. I really admire those people. I don't do either of those things, but I'll tell you what I do like to do with my planner. I found that this strategy is very effective for my personality. What I'll do is throughout the planner, not on every page, but scattered throughout the planner, at the beginning of the year, I will place beautiful little decorations. I'll put stickers on one page, I'll use washi tape on another page, or I'll take a pen and I'll write myself a message, a message to my future self on another page little things that I forget that I did, right? So as I go through the year, I'll turn the page and I'll remember, oh, <laughs> I decorated this page in an Alice in Wonderland theme, or I wrote a little note to myself and that makes me smile. Hiding those little Easter eggs throughout the planner, I love it. It's like little surprises that I look forward to. And sometimes if I feel like being just quiet or creative, I will decorate my planner a bit and I'll, you know, uh, make it look pretty in various ways. And doing this really relaxes me and I like it. I like looking at the planner when it looks beautiful. Tip number six is to consider tracking more than your to-do list. Think about the biggest goals you want to achieve this year. Do your goals involve your health, like exercising more? drinking more water, intermittent fasting, get in the habit of tracking this. Or do your goals involve homemaking or school or work? Put these goals in your planner and consider putting motivational messages for yourself along the way. My final tip, tip number seven, is to make sure that you schedule in fun. Okay, so we're trying to achieve goals, we're trying to be productive and uber efficient and get our to-do list checked off every day, and I've given you various ways to do that, but don't forget to schedule in some fun. And this is another thing that you can do for your future self throughout the line. We tend to work so hard and it never ends, especially if you work, if you have children, if you look after your home, you can just go forever like a machine and just work, 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 right? But you must remember to schedule in fun. This is also going to help you want to look at your planner. So look in your planner, schedule in a girl's dinner or schedule in um, a nice walk alone or schedule in a massage or schedule in a weekly manicure that you give yourself at home in your planner. And seeing these reminders when you turn to that page will make you smile and it will remind you to take care of yourself. Because I know we are busy, we are goal oriented, we are knocking off things on our to-do list and we can forget to take care of ourselves and to slow down and do fun things. Here's how I look at it. It's like the mail. 
If every time you check the mail, all you got were bills and advertisements and boring things like that, it's not that fun to check the mail. But if you have a pen pal or if you're expecting a letter, suddenly every time you check the mail is a fun experience. Even if you don't get anything, it's that anticipation that you might have a letter in the mail. I'm going to do a plug for the Chic Society pen pal program here. <laughs> if you join our private membership group, we do have a pen pal program with like-minded connoisseurs. You're going to love it. But truly, when you schedule fun things in your planner, that combined with decorating it and making it beautiful, it will make you want to open up your planner. It doesn't have to be this dull, boring type A to-do list. You can infuse creativity and fun in it. And I know personally that that's what helps me use my planner on a regular basis. I hope that you found this video useful and motivating and that it inspired you to use your planner this year. I would love to know what your word for the year is. Please leave it in the comment section down below. It's wonderful to be back everyone. Keep calm and remain classy and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.